guitar and excel, open chords, C major scale, F major chord, and C scale. Get ready and don't fret. Remember, the board's fretted so you don't have to be. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint, because we will simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us our scale and related chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently four tabs down below, two example tabs, an OG tab and a blank F tab. The OG tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, mapping out the entire fretboard, giving us the entire musical alphabet, numbering the entire musical alphabet, providing a worksheet to create the scale that we're focused in on, and then giving our scale and chord worksheets on the right. We then copy this over so that we can focus on the particular areas, in this case, looking at the C major scale and then focusing in on each of the chords in the open position. We started that process with the C chord. So that's in the example C where we hid the cells of the fretboard so we can just see, in essence, the open position. We mapped out the C chord in that open position, and then we analyzed it in multiple different ways. We are now continuing that process with the F. So we copied over in a prior presentation from the OG to the F blank tab. We hid cells so that we can see only the open positions from frets zero to three. Then we mapped out the F chord where we had the, the one, three, five, the one being green, the three being red, the five being yellow. And we noted that we can finger this position multiple different ways as long as we're grabbing one of each color and we will be playing in, ess in essence an F major chord. So now what we want to do is think about the scales on top of that in a similar way as we did in a prior presentation, starting with the pentatonic scale and then looking at the major scale. Then we'll put them together and then we'll talk about the relationships between the C scale and the F uh, and the F major scale. It's important to remember that we're actually in the C major scale, even though we're focused on an F major chord. We're really trying to map out the fretboard in this open position related to the C major scale. So we're taking now the four note, constructing a chord from it. The way we do that, we can take the four note in the scale and then skip every other note. So we've got the F, we've got the A, and then the C. But when we actually name these notes, we name them in relation to its particular scale. So we call it a one, three, five, not of the C major scale, but of the F major scale. In other words, if I go back to the OG tab over here and I map out something in the key of F, now you're gonna have the same one, three, five as the one note. And there it is one, three, five. Uh, in terms of its related scale. So that's kind of important to remember because when we're moving from the one to the four, you could switch entirely to the F scale, the F related scale, or you can think about it inside of, in essence, the C scale, and that's gonna be our major focus here. In other words, when we're noodling around with this, when we're adding other notes in the pentatonic scale and in the major scale, we have two choices when we move to the four chord. We can switch entirely to its related scale, or we can stay in the tonic scale, the root scale, our home base, which in this case is the key of C, or we can do a modal thing, which we'll talk about a little bit. Now, last time we could do that a couple different ways. We talked about if you have uh, this F, you can think about it as we're in the key of C, and then we're going to be playing an F and practicing the F. So that means that you need to keep the C as your root. So you can basically play the C and then move to the F. And then we said that you can lift up any finger that you want and that should fit because any of these open notes will fit in the key of C and we're playing this F as it relates to the key of C. These three notes fit in the key of C but not all the F scale will match the key of C. 
So if we if we think about us being in the key of C, then we can lift up our fingers and we're in the key of C. Now, if you wanted to practice the F itself and not be going back to the C, that means that the F would then be the tonic. It would be your central location. And if you're just jamming here and you're picking up fingers, doing whatever you're doing there, and you're not, you're not going back to the C, but you're playing notes around it that are in the key of C, then you're playing a mode. And so you're playing basically the fourth mode. So you can, you can do it that way, and you can think about basically playing in the key of F as if it's your central. And one way you can think about that is you can just say, well, I'm playing the notes in the key of C, but I'm using F as my tonal point, my center point. I'm always going back to F. You know, the, that's the place, that's my home base. Or you can basically map this out to a mode. And remember, the modes are to the right. So if I go to the right, we see the minor, we see the Dorian, we see the Phrygian, and then we see the Lydian. And the Lydian is the F. So F Lydian has all the same notes in it as the C major. In other words, if I hid this, let's go ahead and hide this out just to check that out. And go from here to here, I can hide this. And so now you now you can put this side by side and you can see these same notes, but now you're saying the one is in the Lydian. So now my one is the F, but now the one, four, five are no longer, you can see by the, by the capitals here, the uppercase, the one, four, five are no longer the majors. Now the one, two, and five are the majors because we basically just reoriented this so that the one is now the F even though all the everything is the same as the key of C. So whichever way you want to look at it, you can practice that way. And we're still basically trying to map out all of the notes that are in the key of C on the fretboard. We're just changing the focal point. All right, so given that, let's go ahead and I'm going to unhide this again. And then I'm going to hide back from three to here, right click and hide. All right, so then we can go down to the pentatonic. Now, when we look at the pentatonic scale, that's mapped out in green now, the dark green, and then we still have our F on top of it, noting that this pentatonic scale is related to the key of C, not the key of F, because we're imagining we're in the key of C. These three notes are in the key of C, but not all the other notes in the F major scale are. So we're still, if we're noodling around here, we can noodle around with an F and then pick these chords up, which are in the key of C, imagining that C is basically our root note. Now, as we do this, note that the F itself, that's one of the notes that are not included, right? Because we got the one, two, three, five, and six are the five pentatonic notes. We don't have the four and the seven. So that F actually isn't in the pentatonic scale for the key of C, which we're working in. It will be in the major scale, of course, because we constructed it from the major scale. Now, the benefit of the pentatonic scale is that it, it gives you uh, a little bit more flexibility or it's safer oftentimes to play when you're switching from chord to chord, for example, uh, the, the, the notes you're playing within it are usually a safer bet that they're not going to clash, for example. So you might want to focus in on a particular area here. And again, you might do this a couple different ways. You could say, well, I'm in the key of C, so you'd have to play like the key, like a C, and then you could noodle around in the key of C, like I could focus in on this one little bit right here. And I'm always saying that the open chords are good because I'm in the key of C. So I'm just kind of seeing what can I noodle around. And, to, and then go back to the key of C, and then I'm going to switch to the F, and I can do the same thing in that little that little square. Right, and so just an an an, an easy strumming, like just two down or something. And 
that'll help you to switch back and back and forth. Now, when you do the downstroke on a C, that kind of subconsciously puts our ear in that key. So when I play these notes, you're you're not thinking. Your listener doesn't think. Or you don't think probably either when we're when we're playing it. I don't think when I'm playing it that that sounds like a key of C, but it does because I laid down the bass chord. And then when I switch to a key of F, and I play those same notes, they sound a little different because they're now playing over the F. So you just lay down the foundation with a strum, a couple strum, C. So those sound like they're close to a C. And those sound, those are the same notes, but they kind of blend into the, to the F. The other way, of course, you can practice this is you can make the F the tonic or the central point. You say, I'm not gonna go back to the C, I just wanna focus in on the F. Right, and then you can. I'm kind of restricting myself to that little box here, which is a little difficult. But but if you do that, then you can practice just basically the F. Just remember that you're playing a different mode. You could go to the mode on the right hand side and look at the modal worksheet, making it the one note. But, or you can just think of it as I'm playing the key of C, but acting as though the four note is the tonic so that you're still memorizing all the notes in here as they relate to the key of C. And that's important because now you're, you're really mapping out the fretboard in these positions where your fingers can go in relation to the key of C, but now you're just using the four note as kind of like the tonic and that could be fun to, to play with. And then you could do the major so now this is the same thing but now we have uh our our f shape which could be this or it could be this and now we're mapping out the major all the major on top of it remembering again the major that we're mapping on top of this adds the other two notes but it's still in the key of c so we could then like i could look at this bit down here and that fits nicely into my shape, right? So if I, if I have this shape, I can see that I can play those notes, right? I have the open note, this little box, and then this note, and then I have these two notes. That fits pretty nicely into, my, into both of these shapes. So if I was playing a C, I could do that pretty easily. And then if I switch to an F, I could do that same thing. So, right, I'm just noodling around knowing that I can play, I can play these, these notes, right? I can, I'm focusing in on these bottom strings and I don't even need to focus in on the open ones because I know open always works. So I'm really just focusing in on these and then I'm lifting up a finger so I can be like, all right, there's the C. F. And then you, obviously you can add to that anything that's in the in the no, in the that you're actually strumming to. Right, and you can add and you can start noodle around with that. Or again, you could just noodle just with the F and say say now I'm noodling around. I'm still playing in the key of C, but I'm using the four chord as the tonic. I'm going back and forth from this box to like to these right and so so and so that's the general idea right and so you can kind of noodle around with that and then if you put these on top of each other now we're now we're looking at if you think about these on top of each other the blue notes are the base the bottom uh the bottom part and then on top of those blue notes we put the pentatonic scale 
and the pentatonic scale covered all the blue notes, uh, but it didn't pick up the F because that F isn't in the pentatonic scale. And then we put this one on top, uh, our, our chord that we're focused in on, on top of that. And so, you know, you can, you can, so you can try to get a, a, a difference between what's in the chord versus the pentatonic scale versus the major scale. Notice when you're noodling around as well, uh, it's kind of useful if you're leading into, as you're kind of noodling around, if you end, if you start and end whatever you're playing on a note that's in the chord, the green, the red, or the blue, the F, A, or C, it will usually sound better because those are the notes in the chord. So you kind of noodle and then you go into these other notes and as a passing through note, and then you go back to one of the notes that are in the chord generally. And, and that uh, is a one, one way you can do that. Now you'll kind of do that naturally because once you start to just kind of do that, it'll, that's what'll sound good. So that's what you'll probably tend uh, towards doing. And then, so then uh, rem uh, remember that, that the next thing we want to take a look at are these shapes. So we said that the one, four, five has this shape that she can basically move up. So I'm going to unhide some cells again from F to AK, right click and unhide. And so, and then I'm going to hide from uh, 12 on over here and I'm going to right click and hide. So, so this is the, the position of the F. So now we have F in the home position. Now, if I'm in the key of C, then the next thing we could play that's still a major is the five. So I can go from the four to the five. And then you see that we have our, our position here. So in other words, if I was to play this out, I can be here and I'm playing in the key of C, but I'm starting on the four in the key of C. And then I can move up to here, which is the five, same shape up to here. So then, so that's useful to kind of practice with but then you might be thinking, well, what about the pentatonic shape around that? The, penta the pentatonic and major shape will not be the same uh, when I go from four to five, if I'm still thinking about the whole thing in the key of C. If I was to switch entirely, and when, I, when I go from the one to the four to the five and switch keys, then it's a different situation. You could think about it either way, but we're really focused in on the key of C right now. So we're saying, I can move this position up. I can do this. And I can play all the notes arpeggiate in it, but I can't really move the whole related, uh, the related major shape around it up because, because uh, it's not gonna be the same exact shape as we move the related shape up. So let me see if I can kind of map that out and we'll see what, uh, we'll see what that looks like just to see that if I go into the here and I'm going to say add and we'll make the rest of it blue. So do we have, we don't have a C, so I'm going to add that and I'll make that uh, blue and then I'm going to say, okay, and then insert, do we have a D? We have a D, we don't have an E, so I'll make the E uh, blue. And so there we have that and then insert. And then do we have an F? Uh, we don't have an F yet. So I'm gonna make that blue because we're focused on the five. And so let's make that blue and then okay. And then insert. And do we have an A? We don't have an A. So I'll make that blue. And so there's gonna be our scale that's around it. So if I looked at these two on top of each other, it's a little difficult to get the worksheet sized. All right, so then I have, I have the same shape here in terms of these notes, but we don't have the exact same shape if I was to, let's actually hide so I can see it, see this one. Let's hide these down to here. Right click and hide. Okay, there we go. Now I can zoom in a little bit. 
Yeah, but now I don't have all the blue notes on this side. What if I copied the conditional formatting across? I think that works. Yeah, I think that works. That's nice. <clears throat> all right, so now I can see I can see this shape here. I can see that shape being moved up, but not everything else. Like these two are, are still colored up top, but this bottom bit is different, right? So the major scale around it is not is not going to be the same even though that shape is the same so that's just something to keep in mind when you're kind of trying to map this out and think about what you can do what what is in the major scale because remember we're focused on the major scale so let's unhide this again and then i'm going to hide all of these numbered ones so i'm going to say let's hide that right click and hide and then this one i can hide that's not useful right click and hide okay and then i'll go down here and do it again right click and hide all right and so there's the five and then let's hide these ones and i'll select this right click and hide now and then here it is going back to the c now remember note that we're playing in the key of c so when you're playing when you're when you're thinking of of moving this position from here to here you could start with a c like this or you can just start with this position that then you're playing in a different mode because we've eliminated the C now that this C this is a different shape so the actual C shape if we were to move it up is up on this uh, fret so I'm looking at that C on the 10 right one two three four five six seven eight ten and I'm looking at that shape right there so that's another place that you can basically play you know, you know, a C, so you can move this shape up here and be playing the root note if you're playing, you know, in uh, the key of C. So that's going to be that one. And then let's go ahead and hide this. So I'm going to say let's hide from here to here, right click and hide. And so this is in now the key of F. So this one we actually changed to the key of F. So note that uh, if you're switching, if you're playing something, even with the C as the root, when I switch from chord one to chord four, I could think of it as just those notes are still in the key of C and I'm playing that chord. I'm going to noodle around the major notes around it still in the key of C, or I can switch entirely to being in the key of F, right? I could switch the whole thing to being in the key of F uh, when I make that change so that when I noodle around something, I'm gonna play the notes specific to the key of F instead of the key of C. And then I go back to the key of C. Again, right now we're really kind of focusing in on trying to understand everything in the key of C, but I just wanna note that for you know context. So then, but also just realize that when you have these shapes, you could you know play with these movable shapes as though if you're playing this F and you think of it as the one, then you can play the one, four, five, starting with that shape and move it up to the relative uh, position. So if you played it this way, let's do a bar chord one. I can move that up uh, to the six and then I can move that up to the eight and I could start to see those relative uh, positions that way. And then uh, I also just wanna map out what it looks like if we uh, if we had this F uh, shape with the with its related scale around it. So let's select this entire thing. I'm going to say, let's say this is going to be equal to, and I'm going to say that we're going to, we're going to add, actually, let's just do this bit. I'm going to take just this bit. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, and then I'm going to add, we've got the F, we don't have a G, so I'm going to make that blue, making that blue, and then 
Okay, and then this is going to be equal to, we have an A, uh, we don't have a B in that area, so I'm going to say, let's make that blue, and then, okay, and then this is going to be equal to, and then we have a, a C is in there, we don't have a D, so let's pick up the D, boom, 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 and then okay and then an e uh we need the e so i'm going to say all right let's pick up an e equal to the e boom boom custom blue okay so there so there we have it and you can see although the the f is in here if i compare that to the shape we had up top this one it looks different right so i can go down and say let's hide hide these I'm going to right click and hide. So, so now up top, we have the same F shape in here, but in here, we're thinking of it in relation. Actually, I hid too much. I don't want to hide that much. Let's hide it from here to, uh, uh, uh you're going too fast. It skipped. It skipped. Right click and hide. So now this shape still has the F in it, but we're thinking of it in relation to the C as though it's the four and the blue notes around it then are in the key of C. Whereas this one, uh, this one down here is in the key of F. So now the blue notes around this one I have to make it pretty small to fit in here. The blue notes around this bit from one to three are in uh, the key of F now. So you can see the shape is similar. That top bit looks the same, but this one is different, right? So you can't, so that's just, you just got to be careful in terms of when you're playing the F, are you thinking of the F in relation to the root or tonic the key of c which is what we're doing right now because what we're trying to do is map out the entire fretboard in the key of c and all the notes of the f fit in the key of c so that will sound good but when you're you can also think about it when you're switching from the one to the four that you're switching entirely and you can switch the entire pentatonic scale to the related f and it will sound more f major-ish than than an f with with the C with the C stuff uh, kind of noodling around behind it. So we'll talk more about that later, these pentatonic shapes. But right now, I just want to note that our goal here is really to map out the fretboard in the key of C. All of the notes that we're playing at this point in time are going to be the non-sharped and flat notes, which is easy to remember because those are all the notes that are in the key of C. So if you're playing something that's a sharp or flat, then you're doing something different, not necessarily wrong, but you're going to another scale somehow. You might be thinking of yourself being in uh, the key of F, which you can do, but, but you want to keep that kind of straight in your mind so that when you're practicing, you have a general sense of the key that you're in because then you'll start to be able to map out the fretboard in your in your mind you'll be able to say you'll be the things will kind of relate to themselves a little bit more. So next time we'll try to uh, name the intervals of uh, the F, the 135, and map it out technically that way.